Hey guys, it's Mateo here and welcome in this new video. Um, a lot of people ask me how I grade and edit my videos and uh, here I am. Here is what I use to process all my videos that you saw online. Um, the software that I'm using is called DaVinci Resolve 12.5 is the latest, latest version and uh, when you open up the software you're gonna see this window. So this is the very very first um, window that you can see. Um, I'm using an old 2013 uh, MacBook Pro 15 inch Retina, uh, 8 gigabyte of RAM, so a very old machine and it's not good at all to edit 4K videos, but I'm trying anyway. Um, and you're gonna say, why? And the reason why is because people sometimes think they need super expensive camera, super expensive software, to be able to edit and grade some videos, but the reality is like uh, it's not true. And this software is completely free. The Vinci Resolve 12.5 is free. Um, I'm gonna use footage shot on iPhone, so no black magic, you know, Sony iPhone. And uh, and I'm using an old machine too that you can find now probably for 1,300 bucks. Um, Something that I'm also using is an external SSD and that's very important because it's going to improve uh, the speed of the process of the software. So even if you have an old machine, uh, I really recommend you to buy one of these those Samsung uh, SSD T3. Uh, they're pretty expensive, but guys, the, the performance is like way better than using like a regular hard drive. So uh, let's get into it. So I'm going to open up a new project here. Um, <clears throat> this is what you're gonna see when you open a new project. This is completely new timeline. Um, and as you can see, there are like four main tabs uh, at the bottom here. And this is all you need: media, where you we're gonna drag our media in the media pool. Uh, edit, where you're gonna edit your video. Color, where you're gonna um, grade your video, of course. And deliver. <clears throat> sorry, where you can export your video, ready to be uploaded online. So, let's get started. Um, in this case, I'm going to use clip shot on iPhone 7 Plus. So, here we go. These clips are shot with the iPhone 7 Plus using Filmmaker app. Uh, I think they're under megabyte a second um, bitrate. <clears throat> I uh, shot this video at the Arches National Park, like a super beautiful place in Utah, about three months ago. So, yeah, that's how you start it. Uh, you have your files here, so you select your drive, you select your folder, and you, the, the clips are going to appear here. You can play back the clips right here. So, as you can see, it's lagging. I'm telling you guys, it's lagging. But it's old, so, anyway. Here we're gonna see all our clips. We can scroll, scroll through them to see them. Okay. Uh, what we need to set up first thing, absolutely important, is go to preference and set up our timeline. Uh, do you want to work in a 1080 timeline? That's totally fine. In this case, I want to try if the computer doesn't crash um, to edit in a 4K timeline. Again, this is DaVinci Studio Lite, completely free. It's going to allow you to edit an Ultra HD timeline. Another thing that I want to set up, and again, guys, this is a very, very basic tutorial. I'm not going through all the options and setting. I'm just giving you the basic information to be able to start editing and create your video right now. Okay. The other, So once we set up the timeline, 24 frames per second, because that is what I shot the videos, Ultra HD, we can go to general option and this is very important because I usually transcode all my H.264 files from the phone to ProRes. Why? Simply because the software read better and it works better with ProRes because they're less compressed. So it's going to be easier for the software to manage the files and it could be quicker too. So in general option if we go to optimize media we can set up which resolution we want the optimized media to be. And in this case, I'm going to select quarter and uh, the codec. So I usually do 422 LT because it works super fine. Uh, and if you scroll down, you can choose where the software is going to save your clips, the, the optimized media. In this case, it's going to be on my SSD drive. 
and I'm gonna just click save and there we go <clears throat> we're ready to work so let's drag all these files here we're gonna select all of them and we're gonna drag them in the media pool as simple as that now we have our media file our media in our sorry our clips in our media pool sorry guys Saturday morning forgive me if some time I'm just anyway from here we can just move to edit right away so we press on edit at the bottom and we are in the editing uh, this is our timeline this is where we're gonna preview our clips so our clip is gonna appear here and uh, let's get started okay let's say we try to play back this clip let's drag this clip in our 4k timeline and see how it plays back um, let's try as you can see it's playing back at 8.5 frames per second and it's very laggy actually this clip is not probably even moving so let's try with another one maybe this one from the car so we're gonna see if it's moving or not okay play and meh. 8 frames per second is not that good again guys I'm, I'm getting it's kind of fun to do these uh, these videos because you can literally um, you can literally be like oh my gosh why they're lagging so much is that because I'm using an old machine I know I need to replace it but that means if I can do it everybody can do everybody can do that so okay the clip is lagging because of course it's 4k computer is old and it's an h264 file so this software is just insane what allows you is uh, again to generate generate optimized media inside the software all you have to do is right click on the clip and go to um, let's use that clip though here right click generate optimized media and now it's creating a pro SLT because we set it up before uh, a quarter resolution so it should play back better I doubt it because we are in a 4k timeline anyway but let's try it. so 20 second of course uh, when you have to edit an entire video you have to select all the clips here like all of them right click generate optimized video and that can take even an hour or two so you get your coffee you get your lunch break and then you're ready to go so 87 90 um, 96 and now we have our generate uh, optimized media uh, now I drag the clip in the timeline and you can tell me how do you know is an optimized media you go to playback and see use optimized media if available in this case it is available or in a, there's like a little V so that means we are using optimized media when you're done with your editing with your project you have to throw everything in the trash you just go to delete optimized media and it's gonna free up space for you automatically and this is awesome so let's try to play back this clip again let's see well, a little better see we're doing it said 24 but it's lagging uh, anyway way better than those seven frames per second so again I don't I don't really know how did I edit this video when I release it because like probably I wasn't able to play with the files neither that's why I need a new MacBook well anyway because the clips are gonna lag uh, anyway I'm gonna just use uh, the original media so we're not gonna use optimized media from this uh, case <clears throat> okay how do we edit a little clip let's say like 10 seconds let's play with 10 second clip and then we're gonna move to the grading and then to export the file very simple um, it's very hard to see the clips now so I'm gonna just scroll them like this but this is just to show you in which condition I'm working okay that's Karina looking at the looking at the arches uh, okay let's use this one okay we're driving as you can see I didn't use any lens any adapter any mount anything this is just what you see from the phone uh, I just shot them in the filmmaker app at uh, under megabyte a second and 4k uh, 20 frames per second too so this is our clip oh my goodness it's very laggy um uh, okay we can use the optimized media in this case but see now it was seven free per second let's see with the optimized media how it does 
No, 24, not too bad. Let's try something else. Let's try to go in our general option, optimize media, and just try to 1.8. That means like super low resolution. And let's try to generate another optimized media for this clip at 1.8. And uh, let's see what happens. This should be even less than 1080. I bet the problem is the 4K timeline though. So if it's gonna lag still, and um, we're gonna just change the setting of our timeline in a uh, 1080, so it's gonna be super smooth. Again, guys, I'm doing I'm doing everything we do now. Like if I'm actually editing and creating a video, so hopefully you're gonna learn from what I'm you know what I'm doing here. Okay, so let's try again. This should be way more compressed, way more. See. See, you can't see that it's like super blur out. You can't even, the resolution just kind of sucks, but let's see. And apparently playback's pretty lag too. So, okay guys, you know what we're gonna do? We are gonna go here and uh, we're going to master project setting and from 1080 and Ultra HD, we're gonna go down to 1080. And let's see if he's gonna fix things here. I'm pretty sure. And here we go. Perfect, super smooth. So if you have an older machine, guys, and you know you can't, you can't be able, you're not able to edit 4K timeline, just go to 1080, and it's gonna be totally fine. The files are still 4K, so 4K files in the 1080 timeline, they're gonna be super sharp anyway. So this is pretty smooth. Uh, let's see if it play back even without an optimized media in 1080. And eh. Not too bad, but you know, so okay, let's just pick up uh, four clips. Let's say uh, we can pick up this one driving that we already have an optimized media. We can pick up this one and uh, generate an optimized media. So let's do this all together. We can do this, we can uh, let's see again, guys. This is just an example, so don't. Uh, expect anything crazy we can do these we can do this one we can do Karina here Karina the car uh, maybe like a just a stable shot like this one here okay so I selected the clip that I wanted to edit to put together just gonna right click generate optimized media and I guess we're gonna wait a little bit see so it's now taking two minutes and two minutes. So I think we can wait. And in the meanwhile, um, I'm gonna show you a little bit of software. Um, this is the editing tab. So as you can see, you have the media pool that is the one here. You have uh, the FX library. So now it's not selected, but if I click on it, it's gonna appear our effects library here where we can select the titles, the audio effects and stuff like that. Uh, the metadata, in case we wanna know um, the characteristic of our clip and the inspector where we can zoom in and re reframe our clips stuff like that um, it's basically the I don't know how it's called in Final Cut Pro but it's where you can zoom in the clip you can zoom out you can uh, move the clip and stuff like that so it's very simple um, and that's why I'm using Final Cut uh, DaVinci Resolve now because uh, it's free and it, that's the most incredible thing for me that it, such a powerful software um, is completely free so thank you Blackmagic and uh, they did a pretty good job with the software not a really good job with their cameras uh, lately but even if I have to tell you they test out the Blackmagic Cursa Mini and oh my gosh it's such an amazing camera so okay we still have another minutes to go here uh, Okay, so we're we're creating ProRes LT at one eighth resolution, so they're gonna be pretty blur as well, and we're editing everything in a 1080 timeline. Okay, so let's put together this little sequence for you. Again, guys, this is very very basic. I know there's like tons of people out there that they have an iPhone seven or a Pixel or a Samsung and they want to shoot and edit and great stuff and I think this is like a uh, I think it's a very good way to start because I'm not showing you like you know super complicated editing or color grading process I'm just showing you a very very basic that everybody can do 
keep in mind it's not that you're gonna open the software you're gonna boom create a video it's gonna take a while it took me like about a year uh, of keep, keeping using the uh, DaVinci but <clears throat> and I'm not a master uh, but anyway I'm just just okay I'm just I'm just good uh, I can allow what I can do we can achieve I know how to move I know how to manage to work with an old machine and uh, you know okay guys 98 and we finally done we are ready so um, let's drag there's a different way to edit in this case because I already select them I'm gonna just drag them here in my timeline I usually don't do that I usually go through the clips like this and uh, I scroll them I pick up like an in point pressing I on the keyboard and an out point pressing O and I just drag drag it here okay but in this case because they were already selected otherwise I'm not gonna find them anymore I'm just gonna do this I'm just gonna drag everything in the timeline um, and uh, I'm gonna just edit with you know these little clips here we don't need the media pool anymore so we're gonna click on the media pool it's gonna disappear more space for us if you want effect library boom we got effect library with uh, effects and uh, open effects how do you fit everything? Uh, yeah, this I want to show you this panel. So the inspector panel. The inspector panel. Here we go. We have the composite mode, uh, opacity, transform. Right, okay, the transform. So we can rotate a clip. We can uh, um, move the clip if we want. We can do this much stuff here. Uh, cropping, so we can crop left. Oh 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 oh. Guys, is happening? Nope, didn't crash. Okay. Anyway, let's let's move on because I'm I'm afraid this thing is gonna crash soon. So let's create a little a little sequence. So which key do we have here? Okay, we have our our car thing. So we can probably start with this one. Let's move this one here. Oh, remember to save the project. So I'm gonna just press uh, Command S, save uh, tutorial, save it. So in case it crashes and we have to reopen, you gonna it's it's fun because you're gonna follow me in these all these tabs and something's happening is happening and I'm not cutting this video I'm just not gonna head it I'm just gonna upload it right away. Okay, we're driving. Good enough. We trim it. In. You just simply bring the clip and you just drag it. I'm not using a shortcut. I'm not using any any crazy sh keyboard shortcut. It's not because I want to show you the basic and how like so everyone can do that so let's go into another driving clip so we have her driving so street camera turn then she's driving it's good enough for me we can cut it here uh, we can go then on maybe this one here well nice case driving we see this amazing place this park actually guys is amazing if you have a chance to come to Utah uh, first write me an email because we can meet and uh, okay this is pretty good too so I'm just you know trimming clips cutting them down and uh, just put them all together and uh, what she's doing here oh, they're pretty cool She's always in my video. She hates me. Okay, this is our little 18 second clips. So let's play back. You see, I cut out the clips, I put them all together, and uh, here we go. We got a little mini sequence in the Arches National Park. Nothing super interesting, I know, but again, just for the sake of. Uh... Oh, she said something probably there. She said, Are you guys stop filming me? Okay, let's do this here. Okay, what's next? Let's see. Let's say that we created our entire video. Okay, let's say that our timeline is now four minutes and not eighteen seconds. We love the editing. We done nothing else we want to do. That's it. Okay, what are we gonna do now? Save the project. And we want to grade the footage, so let's go to color grading, my favorite one. Okay, this is what. I, okay, let's close this. Okay, 
pretty good, pretty good. We have our gallery here. Um, we have our okay. Our timeline is like down here. So these are all our clips that we use. Okay. So if I play back from here, I'm gonna simply see the duration of one single clip up here, and then it passes. Second clip. Okay. So our timeline now is like here. We can hide it if we don't need it, and we're gonna make more space. So we click on clips, and there we go. We have clips and not. <clears throat> also, we can visualize our timeline like this instead with clips. So we can move here, for example, or here. And that's cool because, like, if you're editing on the go on a super small laptop like this one, you want to save space to see what are you actually grading. So, and here we have our nodes. Um, Usually people do uh, one nodes for the saturation, one nodes for the white balance, one nodes for like, and they have like a freaking 20 nodes structure, but I can't handle that. So I do a little way more simple stuff, especially because these videos are not paid. Nobody's paying me to do this and I don't want to spend too much time. So I usually fix the white balance, I increase the saturation, I give them a look with the using a lot and uh, that's pretty much it. We have our curves down here. And here you're like a bunch of tabs that I don't want to go through all of them because they're too long. But this is the main one that the one that I use more is like a, our three wheel um, lift gamma gain. Uh, we have, I'm not really using this, not this one. I'm not really using curves that much. This is our qualifier that is cool if you want to select like a, a color and just <coughs> change that that color that section of the of the clip we have our mask here pretty useful I always use them a tracker to track if you want to do a mask on this car and tracker we can do that uh, I use this radius because increase your sharpness so as you can see the clip now it's super sharp and now it's blur <coughs> so I usually go down to uh, 48 0 0.48 here usually and uh, and we have our our key here where we can uh, select if we apply a lot or if we apply a grading we can select uh, how it's gonna affect the clip <coughs> so in this case we have a thousand but we can go to 500 and it's gonna apply the effect we can see here at the basically 50 percent so we just set up these at a thousand because we're not gonna use this today we have a, this is very important, especially because I usually put black bars. So a lot of people ask me, how do you uh, achieve the widescreen look? And um, it's not very hard. I simply uh, apply black bars to top of the bottom and I move my clip and I try to center it. So, <clears throat> okay, let's do, let's say how I will, what I would do if I was creating this little video. Okay, I usually create two nodes. On the second one, I apply a lot, and on the first one, I adjust the white balance and I adjust the shadow, the gain, gamma, stuff like that. So, but first of all, we're gonna we wanna give him a cinematic look. So, to achieve this, we press on timeline here, output bank blanking, and here we have our aspect ratio. So, if I press 133, it's gonna be 4 third, or 166 is gonna be probably standard HD, 177, 185, we are going for the 235, there we go, black bars, top of the bottom, we save, just in case, what are we going to do now, of course, we have black bars now, so the clip should be centered, and if we go on this tab here, and we go on tilt, <coughs> sorry guys, you see you can move your clip up and down, so, of course, you don't want to move it too, up but right there so it was like here before and we're moving like up here because it's more centered okay so we're giving the look now right actually I made a mistake because I didn't want to uh, tilt the image on this node I wanted to tilt it in this one so I'm gonna delete this node and I'm gonna move oh actually it's just the same doesn't really affect the nose so Sorry guys, it's Saturday morning. <clears throat> okay, so it doesn't really matter when, you, if you move the clip, it's not gonna be on the node, it's just gonna be in the clip itself, so that doesn't really matter. Okay, 
Let's get started. We go on the node number two, and I usually use, as you can see, Division Color Plus, the series. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Um, I go on 3D Plus, and I usually go on uh, Vision Color series. And I have a bunch here. I usually apply. If you have to play the Rec 709 one because we're not shooting log yet. And here's the big surprise, guys. The new Filmic Pro is going to allow you to shoot log mode. Yes. But this footage is not was not shot on log. It was shot on Rec 709. So we're going to apply lots for the Rec 709. Uh, let's pick up this KDX that I like. See? Nothing really, you know. Before, or oh, if you press Alt and D, you're gonna see before and after. It's a shortcut. What I don't like usually from the iPhone footage phones in general are the blue and the green. So, see that blue there? It's, I'm not a fan. <coughs> and the green too is kind of like, I don't know, it looks like cheap. So, when I apply this lot, see, it kind of looks like more cinematic already. Of course, it doesn't work that you apply the lot and that's it, but you have to go through some adjustment again guys this is basic pre color grader great colorist out there don't judge me because of this i'm trying to show people that they can do a basic color grading with a free software by themselves that's it if they would have to pay me ten thousand dollars i would go through freaking 20 nodes and stuff like that and pick up the sky or replace the sky and all this kind of stuff, but I don't, I'm not going to do that now, because I don't need it to. Okay, I applied the note, the lot on the note 2, and now I'm moving on the note 1, <coughs> where I can adjust my stuff. How do I see how things going? Right click on the clip, show scopes. You want to have these open all the time, because they're going to tell you whether or not you're overexposed, underexposed, white balance, stuff like that. So... We can use our waveform here. Okay, the clip is pretty well exposed. So what we can do to create like a more cinematic look? Oh, I forgot something. When you are in grading, you don't want to use your optimized media. You want to use the original clip. So we play, we click on playback and deselect optimized media. So now we should have, as you can see, uh, the full HD resolution clip. So for now, I just apply a lot before after okay uh, let's adjust a little bit the contrast so let's go down a bit with the shadows right there we can go up with the highlights just a little bit and the mid is probably gonna affect most of the clip yeah depend now what you're looking for I love super contrasty things so usually you know go super down with the Gamma as well, so let's see, before, after, super contrasty, kind of like, you know, white balance is a bit on the yellow kind of side, but we should move a little bit on the blue, and we should put a bit of magenta, just a bit, uh, yeah, that can probably work, maybe just do blue, go to yellow, and th this is totally up to you, I would love these for example super yellow kind of western kind of style but <clears throat> because I want to tell you how to do things right I'm just gonna white balance the clip properly as much as I can even if it wasn't shot log so I'm kinda happy with that that's that's pretty good so this is with just a lot and then after the you know there's maybe too much magenta so we can just go down on the green a bit move on up kind of cool. Uh, what I usually do also, I increase a little bit the sharpness, so I usually go on this depth here, and I go to radius, and I go down to 0 0.48, okay. Not going to see anything now, but trust me, it's going to increase the sharpness a little bit. <coughs> I think I got cold or something, because here in Utah, guys, it's one Fahrenheit over, I don't know, minus 17 Celsius, it's pretty cold. So sorry for my voice, for my cough, but, you know. Okay. What else? Um, I don't know, guys. It's like the clip is pretty good exposed, and uh, can uh, 
Shadows looks pretty good to me. Yeah, I wouldn't do anything else. Honestly, I like it. It's it's pretty cool. So we play back if it's not gonna crash the software. Awesome. Okay, <clears throat> this is a this is another clip with Karina. What we can do here, we can apply the same lot. I know that I can press plus and it's gonna copy the same color correction. I know that, but <coughs> let's do that. Let's do that. Let's try how it looks. So <coughs> there is a shortcut that you can set up when you are in this clip. You press plus and it's gonna copy the grid here on this clip. Or if you're in this clip and you wanna copy this clip, you press minus and it's gonna copy this grading. So plus previous clip minus two clips before. It's gonna just copy the exactly same thing. So I have this set up already, so I'm just going to keyboard mapping. Mateo. Okay, so if I now press plus, it's gonna copy the color grading of clip number one to the clip number two. Ready? One, two, three, four. Boom. Okay. Of course the tilt is not quite right, so we're going down with the clip. There we go. Okay, we can close this, we can close this. And uh, oh wow, as you can see, before, after. What do you guys think? Um, I think she's a bit red on the face, so I'm gonna go with my gamma to go maybe more in the blue. Or, if we wanna be fancy, we can create another nose, go on the qualifier, <coughs> actually curves and we can do you versus sat I'm gonna press on her face and we're gonna drag this down and look at her face it's almost black and white see <coughs> sorry again this code so basically what I did here I pick up the these these colors here between like a red and orange and uh, because the curves is you versus sat, uh, whatever I select is gonna increase the saturation or drag it down. So what I want to do is just going down a little bit, just a bit. Uh, okay, that's pretty good to me. And again, before, after, before, after. I a little bit desaturated her face because it was too much. Another thing that I can do, I can um, go down with the gain because they're kind of like overexposed outside um not too much well this white here this thing is gone so there's not really too much to recover actually probably this is sand but like this white here on the mirror that's gone no way to recover that you can go a little bit higher a little bit higher with the gamma we can just go down a little bit with the shadows create a little bit interesting contrast and before original clip and after nothing crazy nothing too much but you know and this is our clip and we go to the next one <coughs> that is this one uh, oh wait okay sorry it was lagging as always but yeah guys this is basically how I graded my footage so I apply a lot on the node number two Here, I apply a, not a lot here, I adjust my clip here, and pretty much that's it. I also purchased uh, a thing called Thinkover. Thinkover. I'm going to do a separate tutorial about that one. It's awesome, uh, you basically download the profile picture of the iPhone, and you just can give like the film look. It's awesome, actually. I'm going to do a separate tutorial, but I want to show you this very last thing before the exporting, so, and then we can move on. For this clip, I'm going to use Fincover Pro, so, two lots, two nodes, sorry, I'm just, I'm just talking, this is too much. So, I'm just going to get Fincover Pro, it's like an, uh, a plugin, we drag it on the node 2. As you can see, the image already got affected, but we're not there yet. <coughs> we're going to choose our camera. Here is the camera, so I'm going Apple, iPhone, standard, apply. Better, this 
this I love film cover because it makes you achieve like kind of like a film look. It's super awesome. It costs what 150 bucks, I think 149 the plugin, but it's I love it. And then in the film cover plugin, we have a bunch of options uh, like the exposure. So if we go down with exposure, see. So we want to be like about here. And then we have a temperature, so it can be super warm, super cold. We're gonna be about, let's see, maybe something like this. And then we go down, and here we select our film that we want to emulate. So there are a bunch here. <coughs> As you can see, slightly different. And then we can actually go to this kind of stuff that is very like um, super 8 millimeter kind of film look and uh, actually let's do this instead of 2.35 let's get our aspect ratio at 1.33 because this is gonna look way more like a film so you see now I have the band like on the side okay um let's do what else they got here oh my gosh I need water guys because my pro is on fire but I can't. I need to finish this tutorial first. Oh my good. Oh my god. This is pretty cool. This is kind of super film look. Oh wow. This is my favorite though. KDP 400. Okay. Uh, okay. I set up that one. And then I can set up if the quality is going to be like. The size is going to be like 8 millimeters or super 8. 16. I would go for the 16 maybe. <coughs> Sorry. Of course, if you go up to 35 for frame, the quality is going to be uh, way better. Way better here, 35 millimeter. Karina just interrupted me, but that's fine. We're going to just leave 60 millimeters. Let's do this. You can adjust like a bunch of stuff here, curves. See how that's the like the image and the grain. That's awesome. The grain feed cover is awesome. Not too much, but let me just write a bit. And then we have color correction thing. We got saturation that we can increase. We can decrease. Leaf, shadow, gamma, highlights, levels. You can actually export. You can create your own look and then you can export it as a 3D lab. So you have always with you. Gray gun fix. <clears throat> and yeah, it's pretty much there. Before and after. And I think it looks awesome. Of course, there's like plenty of things to do here. Like increase a little bit the mid tones. This is quite dark. Going down with the uh, leaf, but not too much. And I like a little bit. Too much. Yeah, there's like a bunch of options. But see, is that you can do basically everything in the in this this plugin and it's awesome and yeah, look at that does it look like a film oh man again guys super basic super super basic so don't freak out this is not how I create super professional footage but honestly sometimes it's just that you don't need to have like 50 nodes and pick up stuff I mean if you want to cheap look that you like it and you can do it with two nodes why not what I can do yeah I can pick up the sky change the color I can do whatever I want but I don't want to because I'm happy with this image that's it okay last step exporting the video <clears throat> that's pretty easy we click on deliver we have a bunch of preset up here that we can set up like an XML Final Cut Premiere I usually go here I do um, export video um, ProRes 422 HQ. <sighs> Field rendering, I don't know. Uh, I usually select this. Um, and then you have advanced settings. And here I usually click on full. And I usually click on first sizing as quality. First the bear. First the bear to address quality. <coughs> and see, here you have your timeline. So this is what you're going to pick up. This is your in and out point. And uh, simply you select uh, a location where you want to save it. Like, my drive, add it to render queue, and you press start render. And it's rendering. 
Okay, it's gonna. We have one minute left, and it's rendering our entire clip now in four third, four third, of course, one point three three aspect ratio because I pick up that one. But uh, yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. This is how I do basic editing and color grading and exporting with DaVinci. Uh, if you have questions, guys, just let me know. I hope it was clear. Sorry for the cough. Sorry for everything. It's a Saturday morning. I just decided that I want to do this because I saw so many comments asking me to do that. So hopefully you guys are going to enjoy it. And yeah, see you the next one. Bye.